YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is way off topic from what I usually do on this channel. This video is in response to another video by Jill Maurer, and I will link that video below. From the title and the thumbnail on her video, it sounds like she's talking about LeBron James equality sneakers, which I knew nothing about. And usually I would not watch a video about shoes because I'm not into shoes, but Jill has been doing this really cool thing. She's challenged herself to make a video every day for the whole year of 2019. It's quite a feat. She's doing great so far, and I have committed to watching every one of her videos too, and I've been commenting on them. And so far they've been excellent, just like any other video I've seen from her. She is one of my favorite YouTubers. I just discovered her, I don't know, a month or two ago. So I'm gonna ask you guys right up front to go to her channel, check out her content, and if it looks interesting to you, to go ahead and subscribe to her. Back to her video, what she tends to do in a lot of her videos is draw you in with the content that's in her title and thumbnail and then give you this deeper message. And that's what I really appreciate. I learn a lot from her videos and they're about a variety of things. She is, well, she's a complex person. She's done a lot of things in her life. Currently she's a jewelry designer. She has gorgeous jewelry. I'll link those websites below too. So partly because of that, she talks about design in all kinds of different forms and pretty much anything in the world you can relate to design. So her content is very varied and so, so interesting. So I've been watching all these videos and the one about shoes. Honestly, I was not excited about because I'm not into shoes, but I watched it anyway. While I was watching it, the theme of equality from the shoes led her into discussing equality, I think specific to America. Maybe it was more worldwide than that. And this reminded me of several things and I wanted to do this response video because of the things that I was thinking about watching her video. Specifically, one of the things she mentioned is how arbitrary this notion of skin color is as a method for classifying people into different groups and then discriminating against them based on this classification, which is arbitrary. And I have a lot to say about this. And I know some of you now are wondering, what is this white, blonde, green, blue eyed chick from Texas doing talking to me about equality as it relates to race, skin color? Because she's never experienced discrimination based on her skin color. And you would be correct about that. I have not. But here's why I do feel like I have something to say on this matter. If you watch my channel, you know I'm a teacher. I teach photography. I'm an artist. I have always been an artist, drawing, painting, photography. I dabble in some filmmaking, not just YouTube, but some stuff outside of that. What you may not know is that I also have a background in psychology. I've always been interested in science, and when I got to college I was majoring in painting and I decided to minor in psychology. Loved it so much that I ended up double majoring in painting and psychology got two degrees and then went to grad school for psychology, for social psychology specifically. And that's where this connection comes into me. I wanna talk about some of the things that I learned there that totally changed my worldview and might do the same for you, or at least get you thinking about it if you haven't thought about these things. And the grad school that I was in, our focus was marginalized populations. So a lot of people were researching topics based on race or gender. I was more into the gender studies. Once Hurricane Katrina happened, I moved over to resilience, following trauma. So back to Jill's video, while I was watching this and I have this history of psychology research with marginalized populations, I was reminded of some really interesting studies that I just wanted to mention to you. I have links in the description box below for anybody who's interested in learning more about these. They're really fascinating. And I thought even though this is way off topic from what I usually talk about, that it's interesting enough um, to a broad number of people that y'all might want to know about it. One of the things Jill mentioned about skin color being arbitrary is that it's just as arbitrary as eye color. And that reminded me specifically of a study that was done in 1968 by a teacher named Jane Elliott. She started this experiment the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Jane Elliott taught third graders. And what she did is they came into the room and it was a small class and they were all friends. They were good kids. And she did this experiment where she divided them into groups based on their eye color. So there were blue-eyed kids and there were brown-eyed kids. And she treated one group, let's say the blue-eyed in the situation, she treated the blue-eyed kids really well and gave them extra privileges. And she treated the brown-eyed kids poorly. For example, she would compliment the blue-eyed kids all day and give them extra privileges. They got extra time at lunch or extra time at recess. Whereas the brown-eyed kids, they got talked down to. They also had to wear these little blue collars 
collars, like not like a dog collar, but just like a piece of cloth tied around their neck. So it was easier to identify them from a distance. And what she saw was following her lead. Even though the kids knew that this eye color thing was arbitrary, that was a brand new concept to them that day. No one had ever introduced the idea to them that blue-eyed kids are somehow better than brown-eyed kids. Seeing how she was treating them led to the children treating each other differently. So the blue-eyed kids would start talking down to the brown-eyed kids and not want to play with them. And the brown-eyed kids started feeling really depressed and closing in on themselves and feeling helpless and not being able to focus on their work, being distracted by the fact that they're being treated so badly. And if you want to know more about specifically how she did this, there's a video documentary actually of her doing this with those kids. It, this, the documentary was done the third year she did the experiment. I had never seen it before just a couple days ago when I was doing some more research for this video. I'd only heard about the study. It was so fascinating to go back and watch it and see for yourself exactly what she did, how she talked to the kids, how she treated them differently, their disbelief at first, and then how they fell in line with it. And in this documentary, I hope she did this all the years that she did it, but she started out with blue eyes being better and then the next day she switched it so the brown eyes were better. So all the kids got to experience both sides of the experiment. It's really fascinating. Another study, a lot of you have probably heard of this one because there was a movie made about it a few years ago, the Stanford Prison Experiment. For this, Philip Lombardo took college students at Stanford and he assigned them roles as guard and prisoner and set up this mock prison at Stanford. And it very quickly got out of hand and had to be shut down because the, the participants were taking their roles so seriously. They were even humiliating people, beating people. And I will say disclaimer on this one, there's a lot of controversy about it, not just about how it turned out, but also there's some controversy in the scientific community about the validity of this experiment based on some things that were found out in the years afterward. There was another study done in the 1940s by Mamie and Kenneth Clark. It's known as the Clark Doll Study, and you may have heard of this too because it's been replicated several times since then, including by CNN in a news story, and I'll link below some information about the original study and about the CNN study. Basically what they did with this, and I'm oversimplifying all of these studies, that's why I'm linking below so you can get more information if you wanna know more. But what they did was they took white children and black children, and they gave them each a white doll and a black doll, and they asked them questions like, which is prettier, which is nicer, which is uglier, which is meaner. The answers from both white and black children tended toward the white doll being nicer and prettier, the black doll being meaner and uglier, which is so sad and heartbreaking to see, especially in children that young, that they already have those kinds of mindsets ingrained in them. One of the things that's so fascinating about this study is that since it has been replicated, most if not all of the replications have shown the same results, even in modern day. That is really sad. The point of all this is that skin color, like Jill was saying, is a completely arbitrary classification of people just like gender is, just like nationality is. I know that's a difficult idea for some people to swallow because the ideas of race, gender, nationality have been so ingrained in us. They're these social constructs, and I say social constructs because they are completely made up. Humans have invented these things. With gender, let me specify that I'm separating gender from biological sex. Countries, nations are made up, borders are made up. And for some people, when you hear someone say that, it feels like an attack on something that you have always believed to be true. And it makes some people angry and defensive. But what it really boils down to is human beings have this tendency to otherize people. It's that us versus them mentality, that different is somehow bad, but it's not necessarily. Different is just different. One of the most important things I ever learned was to question everything, and that includes the social constructs that we hold so dear and believe to be the foundations of everything else we believe. When you question them and look at them and compare let's say our culture to a culture somewhere else in the world, and you see that their beliefs are different from ours about 
some of the most fundamental things, like gender, for example. That's when you can really see that things like gender are social constructs. Things like race are social constructs. So it's our responsibility as intelligent, educated, self-aware human beings who are empathetic to see these things in ourselves, to question our own social constructs, to question our own beliefs, to question the beliefs of our societies, to self-correct when we see problems in ourselves, and to educate others. Because most of us aren't taught to question these things. But hopefully I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. I, I always feel kind of silly talking to people about this stuff because I surround myself with people of a similar mindset. I'm used to being in my little bubble in the world where I'm around people who have been educated on these things. I'm around people who believe that everyone is equal, no matter their race, their skin color, their nationality, their religion, whatever it may be. I've also only ever lived in Houston and New York, which are two very diverse cities. So I'm used to being around all different kinds of people. So I tend to assume that everyone already knows this stuff and feels the same way, and everyone believes that everyone else is equal to them. But then I watch TV and I see, especially in the last few years, so much hatred toward other people, like what happened in Charlottesville. And it's shocking to me because I'm in my little bubble. So that's why I feel like it's important to make a video like this. And even though many of you, most of you, hopefully, already think this way. Maybe somebody who's watching this doesn't. Maybe somebody who's watching this has never questioned those fundamental beliefs. And maybe this will get them thinking and light a little spark that will grow. And if that happens, I've accomplished what I want to accomplish here.